So the main Markov chain Monte Carlo method is called the Metropolis Hastings algorithm that we will see now. So if you are not familiar with Markov chains, I urge you to go on the internet and get a, an introduction, a tutorial on Markov chains. But I will give you the essentials here that we will need for the Metropolis Hastings alg algorithm. So we will start from the definition of a stochastic process. A stochastic process is a collection of random variables. They all have the same support that we will call the state space. Typically, we have capital J discrete uh, states. And these random variables are indexed by T, which is time. OK, so it's a, a process that evolves over time. A stochastic process will be called a Markov process when the probability of a state, given the whole history of the process, is equal to the probability of the state given the previous state at t minus 1. Okay, so the, the next state can be predicted from the current state and we can forget about the whole, the whole history. We will define a Markov process to be homogeneous when the transition probability, that is the probability to go from state i at times t minus 1 to state j at times t, is independent of the exact time. So if we calculate the same probability k time intervals later, we get exactly the same thing. So therefore, the transition probability does not need an index t because it's constant over time. And we will denote it by pij. So this is the probability that the Markov process goes from state i to state j at any point in time. If you look at the Markov process in the long run, when t goes to infinity, you can be interested in the proportion of time that the process spends at each state i. And asymptotically, you will obtain a distribution over the state space, which is called the stationary distribution. The first equation says that the stationary probability to be in state j is the sum over all possible states of the probability to be in state i, which is pi i, multiplied by the transition probability to go from i to j. And as you notice, this equation has no t, so this is something which is valid asymptotically, irrespectively of t. And of course, this must be a valid probability mass function. We will assume the following about our Markov chains. We will assume that it is homogeneous, so it has a constant transition probability, as we saw it before, pij. We will assume that it is irreducible and aperiodic. I will not define these concepts. You will find the definition in the, app in the appendix of the slides or on the internet. But basically, it means that any state can be reached from any other state in one step with non-zero probability. And the last assumption is called time reversibility. It's a way to write the equation of the chain forward and backwards. So we say that pi times pij, so the pi is the stationary probability of state i, and pij is the probability to go to j, is equal to the probability to be in j and to come back to i for each i different from j. And actually, if you take the sum of all i of this equation here, you will find the equation that was characterizing the stationary distribution. So this time reversibility is a sufficient condition for the fact that the pi's represent indeed a stationary distribution. OK, so we have introduced these Markov chains, which are homogeneous, irreducible, and time reversible. And now we would like to simulate a random variable with a given probability mass function. How do we do this? Well, we will use this concept of stationary distribution. We will first generate a Markov process such that the Markov process has p j as a stationary distribution. And this is definitely not easy to do, so this is why I put how in parentheses. This is something we will see afterwards. But for now, assume that we are able to do that. So we generate a Markov process where the stationary distribution is defined by pj, which is the target probability that we want to simulate. And then we simulate the process. So basically, 
we simulate for each period of time what is the next state and the next state and the next state. And because eventually, asymptotically, this will converge to pi j, well, because pi j is equal to pj, just running the process will give us draws from the target distribution. Let's take a concrete example to see how it works. So I have a very simple case where I consider a machine that can be in four states with respect to wear. It can be in perfect condition, it can be partially damaged, seriously damaged, or completely useless. And the degradation process can be modeled using a Markov process, which is irreducible, aperiodic, and homogeneous. This is the transition metric. So for example, if the machine is in perfect condition at time t, at time t plus one, so let's say the next week, it has 95% chance to stay in perfect condition. It has 4% probability to be partially damaged, 1% probability to be seriously damaged, and 0% to be completely useless. If the machine is completely useless, then with probability one, it will be in perfect condition the next week because we will buy a new one. This matrix here describes the degradation process of the machine. If you solve the system of equations for the stationary distribution, what you will obtain is this. It means that in average, the machine will be in perfect condition five days out of eight, and it will be repaired one day out of 32. So this is the interpretation. So in average, in the long run, this is what will happen. Good. So this illustrates the concept of stationary distribution. And as you can see, this is the system of equations that we talked about before. But now let's simulate the process. So here in this picture, on the x-axis, I have the time, t. And on the y-axis, I have the probability for each of the four states represented in different colors. On day zero, the machine is in perfect condition. So 100% of the time, it was in perfect condition. So this is here. And then you simulate the process. So you use the transition probability to decide what is the condition of the machine the next day. In this case, until day 35, the machine stays in perfect condition. So until this point, it stays 100% in state one and 0% on every other state. And then it degrades. So the next day it goes to uh, partially damaged and so on. And you can see that the proportion of the time it is in a perfect condition, it goes down. And then you can see here that it goes up again because we have to buy a new machine uh, because it was completely damaged and so on. And so we keep on collecting statistics about the proportion of time the system has spent on each of the states. And these are the four curves that you see here. Okay, so perfect condition, partially damaged, seriously damaged, and completely useless. Now what you see also on these graphs is four horizontal lines. One, two, three, four. And basically, they correspond to the value of the stationary probability that we calculated in the previous slide. But remember, the stationary probability are asymptotic concepts. So therefore, we will have to run the process longer in order to compare the two. So this is the evolution of the process for the first 1,000 days. So again, you see the four curves that represent the average time the process has spent in each state until day t and the four horizontal lines representing the stationary probability. If I continue now until 10,000, what you see is basically what I said in the beginning, is that eventually the Markov process will converge to the stationary distribution. And you see that starting, let's say, from day 2,000, if you apply the process if you continue this simple simulation that I was talking about, basically you will generate draws from the stationary distribution. And this is the idea of 
Markov chain Monte Carlo. Okay, so if you are able to design a Markov chain with a given stationary distribution, simply by simulating the stochastic process, eventually when the process has reached stationarity, the draws that you are generating are draws from the target distribution. And this can also apply to functions of the random variables that we are modeling. So assume that we are interested in simulating the expected value of a function of capital X, where X is a random variable. Well, you can apply the Markov chain on the function, on the same function of XT, and you will obtain the same thing asymptotically. So this is called ergo ergodicity in the jargon of, of Markov chain. Now, what is useful to note as well, and I will go back to the previous slide, is that it's useful to drop early states. As I told you here, the process has reached stationarity approximately after day 2000. So basically, the first 2000 days, we don't need them. Indeed, during these 2000 days, the Markov process does not reflect well, or maybe not at all, the target distribution. So the idea is to run the process and drop the early states. So for example, here I would drop the first 2000. So here, the, the small k is basically the number of days that we will drop in order to get a better, a better representation of the stationary distribution. In the example before, k was 2000. 